What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fish and Grubs. Today's episode is special folks. Today we are doing our top five favorite baits for night fishing for big bass. Let's get into it. All right, everybody, this video has been a long time in the making. I've been catching some giant bass at night, and I'm gonna tell you my top five baits on how to do it, and on the next video, we're gonna go over some tips and tricks on what I like to do when I'm out at night trying to get after those big bass. So a lot of things have changed just in this past week on the order of which these baits are going. But let's get started. Coming in at number five on my top five baits to catch big bass at night, the Sprinkler Frog. I just started tossing the Sprinker Frog a uh, month or so ago, and I mean, this bait is absolutely amazing day and night. The good thing about it is at night is you can hear it traveling through the pads and plopping. So whenever I come up on some thick vegetation, I've been throwing that Sprinker Frog. The only thing is, is I've had so many tails lost that over the past week, um, I've been trying a couple other things because I don't have any sprinkler frog tails. I'm sure most of you have already heard of it. If you haven't heard of it, go to Dick's, get one. They're a little expensive, but if you have 15 bucks just burning a hole in your wallet, you should try one of these things out. Don't forget to get some backup tails, as I did, because they will get crushed. You got your regular frog, but on the back, a little paddle tail swim bait and it sounds just like a whopper plopper, but it's weedless. So, I mean, you can rip that thing through everywhere. It's a phenomenal bait. It is expensive. If you wanna kinda of give something like that a try before you go spending some money, uh, just to see if that bite is on in whatever body of water you like to fish, go ahead and get the Lunker Hunt Prop Frog. I believe um, our buddy from Realistic Fishing just picked one up for four bucks at Walmart a couple days ago. His video was up yesterday if you want to check that out. I'll leave it down in the description below. Uh, Alex is the man. That frog, ladies and gentlemen, I've lost some giants at night. I mean, huge blow-ups. And I've caught a bunch of, you know, two to three pounders on it as well. That being said, the Sprinker Frog is a must for night fishing pads. That thing is absolutely epic. The bite on it is friggin' fun as could be. So go ahead and go out there and get yourself a Sprinkler Frog. Number four. Night fishing bait number four for big bass. Number four, I gotta go with the frog. Now, here's the thing. The frog was sitting at number five until the last time I went out. Now, the first time I ever went night fishing with some friends, I was throwing my number one bait at the top of this list, which we'll get into, and I'm sure you all already know what I'm going to say. But, the first time I went night fishing, I tossed my number one bait into a tree. Typical of me. It wasn't even mine. It was actually my good friend Colby's. That video, you guys can check out. I'll leave that linked below. And later on, after I put that, that bait in a tree, uh, my buddy Steve Tosti gave me a frog. And for the rest of the night, I fished a frog. So that night I ended up catching my first three frogfish ever. And that got me into frog fishing to begin with. Now, the last time I went out, my good friend Dave, who I work with here at Mazda and Subaru, he gave me this incredible Spro frog. My personal best frogfish came at 4.30 this past week. 4.30 in the morning, the edge of the pad line, this giant smashed my giant Spro Frog. Now, as you can see, I'm talking, and the audio in this is shady until the end. So, I'm just showing this fish off, absolutely stunned. I actually thought it was a little bit heavier than what it ends up being, uh, but this fish was a giant and hit it right at the boat. The fight was absolutely amazing. Bent the rod over almost immediately. And on my frogging setup, I got a flare frogging flipping stick uh, paired with a Fluger Supreme. And then you got a uh, 50 pound braided line. And I'm using Power Pro right now, I believe. If you do uh, need a frogging setup, make sure you get a rod that you know, if you can afford it, is specific for frogging because when you're going into the thick stuff, you need something with a lot of backbone to rip these big fish 
out of those weeds. Lucky for me, um, when this fish hit, he wasn't even in the weeds, so I got to f have the entire fight out in front of the boat, and it was epic. Oh my goodness gracious. That's so freaking awesome. Dude, chunk. I knew it was huge. I could hear the gold. Here, hold that for me. Yep. Is that the new high contrast? This is the biggest fish weighing on it so far. You got it? Yeah. Four, four and a quarter? Four, two, three. Nice. Whew. Oh, that's a nice fish, folks. <laughs> I, I literally You're told good. him earlier, I was like, I don't even care what happens today. This day is for you and Chris. No, I wanted to watch someone catch a fish. I've been working so hard. That thing Beautiful. took off. Number three on my top five baits for catching big bass at night. Number three has got to be the MS Slammer. Now that changed again this past week. And the reason for it is I just haven't caught an absolute giant on the Slammer yet. Guys, I just caught a giant. <laughs> Look at that. Just about as big as the bait. But not bad. It would be a keeper. Sweet. Let's get him back in the water. Peace. That's just, you know, it's coming. But here's the thing. I know I've said it before and I'll say it again and I'll talk a lot more about it in the tips and tricks video coming up for night fishing. But night fishing is all about sound. That sprinker frog, that big spro frog, the next two baits in line, they're a lot louder than the MS Slammer. So if you find yourself in a position where it's really, really quiet, still, there's not a lot of animal noise, not a lot of bugs chirping around, there's no wind. Bust out that slammer. It's gonna be a lot quieter on the retrieve than all the other baits I have named. The reason for that is, one, it's made out of wood. It doesn't have a rattle inside of it. The knock is beautiful, but it's, it's a little more subtle than the rest of the baits that we have on here. So if you find yourself in a situation where everything around you is quiet, you're gonna to wanna to match that you're going to want to throw the MS Slammer. Now that thing does have a heck of an impact. It's a nine inch giant wooden bait. So when it hits, you got to let it sit there. So you let that thing just hang out. And when you start to reel in, you'll hear it. It'll be a lot more subtle than the rest of the baits we're talking about today. And I've caught plenty of excellent fish on the Slammer. You can go back to the day that I went out to uh, my home base and, um, all my fish were caught on the slammer that night and some pretty decent ones as well. It was an absolute blast and it was a really, you know, it was a quiet night. So I threw the slammer and it was just getting crushed everywhere. I wasn't even there for that much time during the night. I, I kind of got there um, a couple hours before the sun came up and that slammer paid off. Uh, you can check the dog tag video where before the sun popped up and we had just a touch of light, I crushed a donkey. All these videos will be linked below that I mentioned. Also, you can check out the Traveling Tackle Box video. After catching some fish on the Traveling Tackle Box when the sun went down, I started tossing the slammer for my first time and got my first few slammer fish, and it was epic. It's a great bait. A lot of these baits that we're going to be talking about from here on out, they are a little bit pricey, but they work at night. And the thing is, is if you take care of them, they'll last a long time. Just don't throw them in trees like I like to. So the MS Slammer by Mike Shaw comes in at number three on our top five baits. And if you haven't seen it, there's a lot of people out there catching fish on them. Millican Fishing is one of them. He's been, uh, I, I, I've seen him catch a bunch of good fish on that thing lately. He's been absolutely loving it. I believe we got ours roughly around the same time. You're gonna wanna check that out. I'll leave his channel linked below. Make sure you go stop by if you haven't already, which I, I'm sure you all have. Probably our best fish of the night. Not, not too big, but not too bad. We're going to keep plugging uh, our way back to the boat launch and get the heck out of here pretty soon. We've lost quite a few big bites on the frog, uh, the Teckler Sprinker frog. But we just got this one on the slammer. Another nice fish for the slammer. So let's get it back in the water. Number two. All right, so the number two bait on this countdown has jumped from the number three spot to the number two spot in two outings. 
Just to say that it was starting off in the three spot is incredible after one night of fishing this thing. I don't have any footage from that night. I do have this awesome picture of the biggest bass I caught on it. This bait is amazing at night. And the reason being is you can wake it just like the number uh, one bait or the MS Slammer right on the top of the water or you can crank it down and it'll stay under the water and you can keep it cranked down and then slow roll it. The first time I fished this, I was waking it at first, caught a few fish doing that and I started cranking it down and I caught a bunch of fish doing that. It was funny because after catching a few of it waking and uh, I caught a bunch of other fish on my number one bait earlier that evening, I decided I was gonna crank it down a little bit. So I tossed it out and I looked at Chris and I said, man, it'd be cool if I caught a bass cranking down and smash. I mean, the bite on it is absolutely amazing, but that doesn't even compare to what happened this past week. Just this past week, I went out with uh, my coworker Brian here at Mazda and our buddy Dave, who's a tech over at Subaru, who absolutely loves throwing big baits, by the way, and caught three slammer fish in a row while my bull shad was stuck in a tree. After I got this thing stuck high up in a fern, I mean, this thing was so, I did not think I was getting this bait back. The tree was janky. It had a bunch of limbs on it that just looked like not safe. So I didn't want to climb the tree. So I'm throwing everything that I had in the little kayak I was using that I possibly could think of to throw at this thing in the tree. Ugh, it was devastating and I almost gave up and my temper was starting to rise. I took my number one favorite bait that I had just tied on after almost giving up and I threw that into the tree and it went above the bullshit. I got really angry and basically just came smashing down with my swim bait rod. The number one bait came flying by my head and literally almost took me out. And it does have treble hooks, mind you. And then I heard, splash. Dave goes, dude, your bull shad just fell out of the tree. Oh, it was awesome. So I had the number one bait still tied on. I threw that around for a little bit and then that got stuck in a tree. Now, mind you, the whole night I've been casting great and then all of a sudden, we just came across this one area where I decided I'd throw baits into trees. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's a new technique. I'm gonna start a group on Facebook. We're gonna call it Catching Fish and Trees, linked below. Anyways, the rat was in the tree. I got the rat out and I decided to put the bull shad back on. Bull shad goes back on and I caught one little fish on it. I was wicked pumped because I had already caught a couple on the number one bait. Then we come up to a main point in this private lake. A fellow coworker of mine Mr. Mark Atkinson. We call him Mark Massa. He told me about this spot when I first started working here and told me there were giant bass in it. This isn't the first time we had been here. The story about the first time we came here, that's gonna happen at the end of this video. But this is the second time we're here and now we know there's giant fish in here. And coming up on the point where Mark had said that this point is where the, the rest of the big fish like to stage up. So I'm ready for a big fish. I get to the very, very tip top of the point and there's a small rock coming out of the water. I don't know how big it was under the water. I still haven't seen the point during the daylight, but this rock was, you know, protruding out of the water. David just hit the rock pretty much with his slammer and pulled back on the top water. So when I threw the bull shed up next to the rock, instead of waking it back like I had been, I decided to give it a crank down. And literally it was one two, three. And on that little burn, that three crank little burn to get that thing down, I thought I hooked a rock. But then the rock started dragging me around in this tiny little kayak. Absolutely epic fish. Like, it, unbelievable fish on this bait. Um, second time throwing it at night, really, and it produced this absolute pig. So, damn cool what happened was um, my phone died so I couldn't get any footage off my phone Dave's phone died as well he couldn't get any footage or any pictures on his this camera that you're watching me on right now was sitting in Dave's car which is clear across the lake and I'm in a kayak holding a giant bass 
that we weighed in at 5.55. I'm sitting in this yak and I'm like, Dave, I gotta get footage of this fish, man. I, I, I'm sorry, I gotta do it. You can keep fishing. Meet me back at Mark's house. I'm going, I gotta get some footage of this fish. So I paddle with one hand in this janky kayak all the way back to Mark's house, clear across the lake, while holding a five and a half pound bass by my side in the water all the way. And it's fighting me because it's getting plenty of oxygen and plenty of water. So every once in a while, it just kept ripping my hand. I, I still have bass hand right here from where that damn thing was tearing me apart. Needless to say, we got this incredible footage and this, my friends, this Buka Bullshad in the bone white color, the 4x4 that you can crank down. This is the number two bait that you're gonna wanna throw at night. And when we get back, we're gonna check out number one, and I'm sure all of you already know what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been grinding all night long. It is roughly 1, 1.30 in the morning, I haven't looked. It's 1.13. This bass weighs, what was it, 5.55 five, 5 5 pounds. I'm literally freezing my ass off because I'm soaking wet. <sighs> this fish is freaking huge, folks. Just a f absolute pig. Look at that. Night fishing, Buka Bull Shad, 4x4, four four, bone colored. Whew. Absolute pig folks absolute pig look at that <laughs> proud of you god oh my god dude i had to paddle with one arm with holding this thing all the way across this lake Savage. so i could so i could take this freaking video and get some photos oh, unbelievable Look at the size of this freaking fish. Oh, so. Whew. Tell your friends to come back for more. Solid, bro. Number one. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know me at all, you know what the number one night fishing bait is going to be. It's what I threw the very first time I went out night fishing with Colby and Tosti. It is what I've been throwing ever since. Once I started really throwing it all the time, I was catching some pretty big fish last fall. And I ended up landing my personal best at the time at five pounds and 15 ounces at like 4.30 in the morning. Um, that video I'll leave linked below. It's an epic video. A lot of it takes place at night So, you know, I did leave in um, A lot of the audio with kind of the darkness because I really wanted you to get how the night fishing Kind of feels and how you have to fish with your ear because you hear the explosions And then you just got to set the hook. So number one on my top five baits to catch big bass at night You know it It's the BBZ rat we're talking the big one. The 40, the 40 does well too. I mean, my buddy B, check this out. My buddy B caught this freaking Goliath on the 40. We were both smashing him. I mean, this was right in the springtime before the weeds came up in this wicked milfoiled out uh, small pond. We started throwing the rats there late one night and we were just getting annihilated. But B caught the same bass that I caught there uh, a year prior in July and we actually finally got to put a weight on this thing and it came in again at five pounds and 15 ounces on the on the Spro 40. All right, go ahead. Wait. Unbelievable, but the 50 is my jam. I absolutely love that thing. Uh, the knock on it is incredible. It's got a rattle on the inside. Uh, the tail, the way it moves, it attracts all sorts of fish from your one pounders and two pounders to your six pound bass that you guys all got to see when I went out with hot shots fishing down in Southern Mass. I mean, that fish was absolutely out of this world. And that I got on my not ideal conditions for even going out night fishing on the ride. It was windy, it was noisy, it was crazy out. We were not fishing slow. I didn't get a 
bite until 12.30 at night, like not even one little bite, and then this monster hit. Um, I've gone out so many times with so many people and thrown the rat, and they've just gone out and bought the rat after. Or they've seen the, the show, and they've gone out and they've got the rat. We have countless episodes. I actually have a playlist that's linked below. It's Fishing with Spro, and you'll be able to see how many awesome fish that we've caught on this incredible bait. It's worth absolutely every penny, unless you throw it in a tree, which I definitely love to do. When the bite's tough at night, there's nothing else I'm even gonna touch. I'm just gonna leave the rat on all night long because it's gonna get hit. If I dedicate a night to the rat, it's always gonna get hit. There hasn't been one single night, I, I, I swear to you, there hasn't been one night that I've gone out with that rat and been skunked. Not one night where I've tossed it all night. It is my go-to, it is the best of the best. You know, as you can see with a lot of this footage that I've had just, you know, popping up here and there, this rat is, is unstoppable. If there's one bait out of this entire video that you go out and you purchase, make it the BBZ Rat 50. If you don't have anything that you can throw the 50 on because you need something with backbone, you need something that can handle two ounce baits, go out and get the 40 because that's going to get smashed too. You got to make a little bit extra noise yourself on the 50. I, I pretty much just throw it out and reel it in. Every once in a while I'll stop. If it's a day where it's slow, I'll stop a couple times and every once in a while I'll give it a jerk. Um, my buddy Chris does like to walk it, like walking the dog, and that, that works as well. I mean, the thing just gets hammered. I've left it just floating out and it's been hammered. Uh, the day we went out with Dave a couple days ago where I got the big one on the bull shad, um, my buddy Brian had the 40 just laying next to him because Dave and I were throwing our giant swim baits at his kayak and he was yelling at us and his rat just got freaking demolished just floating around behind him. Do yourself a favor, get yourself a Spro Rat. The number one bait at night, five pounder after five pounder after six pounder after four pounder. It puts the numbers in the boat and the big fish, it freaking calls them up. I can throw that thing at night in 10 foot of water and get freaking annihilated. Fish come up out of nowhere to hit this thing. It's unbelievable. With all that said, we're gonna get to the awesome story that uh, the creator of the rat actually posted to his website after I put it up online. And uh, that's when I took my good friend Dakota from work out fishing for the first time in a long time. He had never caught really anything over two pounds, he thinks, uh, back in the day. He never even weighed them back when he used to fish when he was a kid. And um, he caught his two biggest fish of his life from Mark's dock. Right after I lost a five to six pounder on the rat from Mark's dock. And when that happened, I literally jumped in after it. I fried my GoPro, I fried all my batteries, I destroyed my phone. And right after that, Dakota laid into these two big fish. So it went from being like a terrible day, losing a giant fish, to uh, we're back on top of the world. Look at these. Dakota just caught both of these guys. He literally dove in and grabbed them with the beard. I lost a five pounder, <laughs> dove in, and I ruined my GoPro. I lost my iPhone. <laughs> uh, I ruined my battery pack, my headlamp, and then Dakota landed these two. Live on the Big lake. old mamas. We're gonna weigh both of these. This is the smaller of Dakota's too, real quick. This one's three pounds, zero ounces. There are, so the biggest fish I've caught on this lake is six and a half pounds. Your personal best right now, as of today, our first time fishing together, is three pounds and nine ounces here. There you go. Three pounds, nine ounces, folks. Dakota's biggest fish ever. Let me hide so it can focus on the fish here. Yes, dude. A couple of giant bass. Dakota's personal best. Here. I know. What do I do with them? And another <laughs> three pounder there. All right, go ahead. Bye bye, fishies. That one's just chilling, huh? The other one's down here. He got That's him awesome. Now. Yes, dude. <laughs> right here. Hell yeah. Dakota. Oh. Squad. <laughs> <laughs> 
after recording all this footage with Dakota's fish and getting the release, we took the bass boat out on Mark's Lake. Maybe a good 10, 15 minutes into the night, right around the corner from Mark's house, we caught another giant. Get a shot of the rat. Guys, after losing my GoPro to water and Dakota catching his PB, we, we literally, literally just left Mark's house and uh, we just caught this freaking donkey. I'm gonna get her in the live well for a second and uh, let her breathe. Then we'll get some pictures and let her go. But this is a, in wear, of course, but this is a friggin' giant. Zeroed out on the scale. Yep, got it. All right, put that shit on the scale. Let's get it. One massive fish. Holds on 5'7". Five, 5'7 seven. Five, seven again. Five pounds, seven ounces, BBZ, Spro Rat. Tell you Another now. giant strikes. Ladies and gentlemen, we came out here to put Dakota on some fish. We have not only caught his personal best and another three pounder for him, uh, I lost an absolute giant at the boat and ruined all of my stuff. It's all which is great, but to make up for it, somehow uh, I caught a freaking giant. He is ready to go. This thing hit the Spro Rat like a freaking tank. We got her in the boat. Dakota's net job was amazing this time. He's a freaking <laughs> pro now. He's ready to freaking join the Pro Tour. We're gonna get this big girl back in the water. Look at that. Ready? Peace, Momo. Yes, dude! There you go. Oh, man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for the top five best baits for night fishing. If you enjoyed what you saw, smash that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell because the next night fishing video uh, is going to really dive into um, some tips and tricks on what you should be thinking about if you're going out night fishing, especially if it's your first time. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Fish and Grubs. Fish on!